Was there like a kind of Anchorman news team battle backstage with like Elton's people and your people and Elton had a trident? He, he did, <laughs> he did. He gave me a gentle kiss on the cheek and said, enjoy playing to all three people, <laughs> which I thought was amazing. And, and I laughed and thought, but then when we first walked out, I was like, oh my God, there's, I mean, there was a lot of people, but normally there would probably be a lot more. It was an interesting thing to walk out to at first. It was like, oh, wow, that was, that was some accurate shit right there. It's a good prediction. Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemy. We're here today with Joshua Hummy from Queens of the Stone Age. Hello. How's it going, man? Yeah, uh, yeah, quite well, thank you. You? Yeah, I mean, all the better for being here. This place is pretty insane, right? Yes. Uh, this is one I'm really glad I'm not a decorator. I don't even know how you start to think of this much stuff. <laughs> I mean, um, but London must be like a home away from home for you. We were mistaken for an English band very early on because we were here so much. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think it's just, you know, there are some cities that are just an oasis and obviously it's, it's easy to want to be in London as a, as I guess as a tourist, you know, it's wonderful to take a few licks and move on. You know? <laughs> I mean, what do you tend to get up to when you're not uh, playing shows or have the pleasure of talking to journalists? That's a good question. It really just depends on if I'm here with my littles or if I'm here with somebody else, you know, uh, I kind of, I, I kind of, like sightseeing a little bit. I, I do. Uh, last time I was here, I went to the London Dungeon, oh, which yeah. has changed dramatically. So I went there when I was 19, and now I'm 50, so there's a big change there. It used to just be kids. It used to just be torture apparatus, which I thought was amazing. <laughs> yeah. What could be more family than the grave warning of putting a cage on someone's chest with a rat in it and lighting the top of the cage on fire? Wow. That tells you, listen to what I say, <laughs> you know? Is, is that your favorite implement you saw? Did you have a... No, it wasn't my favorite implement, but it was so insane, you know, to put a cage in your abdomen, yeah. the rat, and then there's a, another little bowl on top and you light a fire on the rat. To, that's insane. You guys um, are fresh from playing the O2 in London the other night, which was... Really amazing show. I think it was one of the best times I've seen you guys. I think what kind of marked it as a bit different was it really felt like the kind of, the sense of joy and gratitude was a kind of bit more palpable this time emanating from the stage. I mean, I just wondered if that was a fair comment, if you felt. I think that, you know, everyone has had a crazy five years and I too have had a crazy five years. And a lot of the guys in the band have as well. And I think we're just sort of, appreciate playing the O2, really. Mm. I mean, I just, I, I guess I'm searching for a good time. I always have been a good time girl. And I'm, you know, I just, I want it so bad. I want a good time. I want to, if I'm going to be far away from, on tour, you know, you leave everyone you actually love to go be with strangers. And that, and so I think my desire is that if I'm going to be with strangers, I want it to, I want it to feel like we're exploding with joy, you know? I just, I, uh, otherwise, what's the fucking point, yeah. you know? And when, it, when you feel it coming back, I'm just in a different headspace. I can feel it coming back. I think sometimes before, I was caught up in my own head, mm. <clears throat> which isn't a bad thing. This is different. There's the old adage of, uh, we're here for a good time, not a long time. And I would suppose that everything you've kind of experienced in the last five years would kind of, uh, yeah, that hits a lot harder now, right? <clears throat> I, just, I just know that that's true, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I just, I know for a fact that not for a long time, for a good time is, is what we're here for. Yeah, so naturally you had a bit harder than most just beyond COVID and lockdown, you know, and that's been said about health issues, family issues, losing so many of your loved ones and friends and such, but coming out of that, what- I know everyone what, wants to talk about that, it's really, <laughs> It's funny because uh, I really don't want to talk about that, yeah. you know, because I, uh, uh, but, you know, every record has a story attached to it or, again, what's its point? You know, I understand that's the story. Mm. Um, and I know good and goddamn well that, that I was trying to write my way out of my troubles. But I do think that's what it's for. 
it's funny though, you know, I think perhaps in the future I should, no matter what's happening, just sing about like puppies and rainbows and ponies <laughs> that swim because uh, then that's what everyone would believe that that was about. I just, yeah. but I just don't know how far that goes. Yeah. You know, in terms of, I need it to be about my real life when it comes to the words mm. uh, and it needs to be real or what's, what's the point? But that's what I mean. Like the kind of what you, what you talked about is using uh, writing as a way to get out of it. Did that kind of compulsion kind of change your relationship to the band and music and having it as a different vehicle to what it might normally have been? Yeah, I, I think early on you're sort of trying to catch up to your inspiration. Mm. You know, first, first three, four records, you just like you're just racing to keep up with your own ideas, and. You know, I always had this philosophy, if you can't outsmart them, outweird them. And so I think in moments when I was feeling vulnerable or unsure or afraid, I just got more bizarre in those moments. Mm. And it felt good to see the look on someone's face twist and, and shake their head and, and say, what are you on about, you know? And now um, I don't have time for that. Mm. I'm trying to keep up with the sort of hills and valleys of regular life, you know. I hope that dealing with the sort of more intense portions of life, um, I hope that means, I, I, it certainly means more to me and I hope it means more to other people too. So I, mm. you know, I think the days of childish pursuits are long gone. It was quite difficult enough post COVID for a lot of people to kind of get back out there and put themselves out there, but you were putting a lot more of yourself out there in the songs and getting back on stage. And I think the first time that happened was at the Taylor gig where you did um, Let's Dance with Niall Rogers. Yeah. That must have been one hell of a baptism of fire. <laughs> uh, that felt really good because, uh, you know, I, I, I think, um, uh, I have I place I've always placed a real high value on escapism mm. um, as a really top commodity. Uh, you know, you will go through something difficult, and if you haven't, it's close, right? So, there's something about ice cream parlors and video game arcades and conspiring by the fireplace with your friends in the dark, fucking. Um, these things are like what it's all about, you know? I, I want moments, I don't wanna, I don't care who you vote for. It doesn't mean anything to me, mm. you know? The notion that someone would be like, you're free to pick one of these two boxes sounds like a classic manipulation anyways. Mm. I'm more interested in how someone feels, what we're gonna do, and romanticizing how we're gonna escape, you know? <clears throat> I think there's just something inherently sexy about the day we make our great escape. And then doing that Bowie song, which is that's the ultimate form of escape, is a mix song. Absolutely. Well. <laughs> as it pertains to that gig, being able to sing Let's Dance with Nile Rogers, as, you know, as, at Wembley for my friend. Because, you know, Taylor would have loved that gig so much. I think it was such a wonderful thing that perhaps only Dave could do hmm. as a, a send off like that. And again, these are just. What he done is this a good way to say I love you, you know? Yeah. And, and I think um, in the years past, I haven't always known how to say that I love you to some to the people I care about, you know? Because obviously you and Dave went through quite similar ordeals and put out records that both kind of, he was writing his way out of it too. Did you guys kind of discuss the process in the making of your record of the Foos album? Yeah, I mean, um, Dave has been one of the longest romances I've ever had that's worked, yeah. you know? <laughs> And he, uh, he's such a good guy, but also love his dark side. And I love mixing our watercolors together like that. And, and just in conversation, uh, we go to this place that's, that I won't name. We go there for breakfast and just eat waffles <laughs> and talk about times as you do. I see that Dean is here. And then as if by magic, Queens of the Stone Age, Dean Fatino joins us. Hey. 
How you doing, dude? I'm great. How are you? I'm pretty good. Fontita. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I was enjoying it. Never thought of that as a musical last name before. So. It sounded all like I'm an amazing spread all of a sudden. <laughs> Fertita. Or like a, a medication. See, in the States, we have all these ad, adverts that are all for medication. Mm -hmm. And then they list an enormous amount of side effects. Oftentimes, the side effect is death. Yeah, so it's probably banned over here. <laughs> yeah, Fertita. And there's like a quick little oh, hook. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... Fertita could be fatal. What would be the main need for Fertita, the drug? That's you tell me. <laughs> oh, that's a great question. It's a cholesterol medicine. <laughs> well, uh, Dean, uh, how's this? It makes uh, your cholesterol very high. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you Prone worried about not ever getting high cholesterol? Well, now's your are chance. Are you too healthy? Yeah. <laughs> Butter capsules. <laughs> There's a great saying uh, by some wise person that was like, Healthy people will feel stupid laying in hospitals, dying of nothing one day. Yeah. So, Dean, we were just discussing, um, well, it was quite a failure at the end of the year. Um, you guys have been at it quite hard this year. One of the best albums of the year. You just pulled off an amazing tour. How are you feeling about being part of Queens of Stone Age at this time? Do, do you feel differently to about the band and your relationship to the music now? Um, I think it's more focus like the last few years I think you could look at for me like I was very aware of things that um, were constants in my life because there was so much change and uncertainty with things um, that you know it's almost like the shiny thing that you see at the bottom of the ocean and you're like walking by and you're like that's either going to be important to me or somebody and you dive in and go get that thing right um so it's like a, a lost ring that you found. In, um, oh, I like that. That's nice. That's for <laughs> um, But yeah, it's just like all the things that, that were constants really came to the forefront for me. And this one, being in this band and the friendships and everything has made doing this tour and this record more important to me than I think any previous project I've done. Um, and I do think like we're, all of us are kind of playing the best we ever have. I don't know what the reason is for that, but I think maybe it's like there's a, you know, a comfort level with everybody and, um, we understand, I think our relationship to each other and what it means in the context of the band. Yeah. Yeah. We have been pondering why <clears throat> we feel we're playing better. It's certainly not from lack of trying or anything before. It was sort of pondering what, why is it that we're, we feel like we're further along than we've ever been in terms of just being able to, to do together as a group. Sometimes if it's going well, you try to figure it out to see if you can get the essence of what that is and hold on to it, you know? Plus, we have nothing else to fucking do. <laughs> Sitting, driving around, we're like, how do we, how do we come to understand what's happening here? But perhaps it's better to just leave it alone and, and accept it and enjoy it. But one of the first times a lot of people would have seen you uh, on your return would have been at Glastonbury. And I was wondering if kind of that kind of magic of everything between you, was that amplified by the magic of Glastonbury? Did you feel it? Glastonbury is, is always an interesting experience and especially the last few times for us because they ask us to <laughs> they always ask us to do the hard job, you know? I mean, I suppose other than driving the sewage truck, uh, you know, playing against Elton is one of the tougher jobs and playing against Beyonce is a tougher job too. What would you rather do? <laughs> drive the sewage truck? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I don't know how to answer that. There's both tough gigs that were really fun. They're tough because you, you don't know if you walk out and anyone's going to be there. Mm. You know, um, and um, yeah, but I mean, quickly all that stuff fades away and you just have a good time. It is glass dough at the end of the day. People are there to all participate in the driving the sewage truck. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're all there to participate in having a great time. I, I, escapism is just really what we're after, you know? And so I think you always feel proud to wiggle the flag. I don't think that sounds right, actually. Wiggle the flag. Permission to wiggle. Permis permission <laughs> granted. 
Um, the name of the next album, Permission to Wiggle. To permission to Wiggle. <laughs> Fuck, I can't believe we gave that away. <laughs> yeah, but I think being the reason people wiggle is just, uh, that's a good that's a good thing. It's a good feeling. Yeah. And obviously you guys had the relationship with Elton. You've, you've worked together before. I can't, was there like a kind of Anchorman news team battle backstage with like Elton's people and your people and Elton had a trident? He, he did, <laughs> he did. He gave me a gentle kiss on the cheek and said, enjoy playing to all three people, <laughs> which I thought was amazing. And, and I laughed and thought, but then when we first walked out, I was like, oh my God, there's, I mean, there was a lot of people, but Normally, there would probably be a lot more. It was an interesting thing to walk out to at first. It was like, oh, wow, that was, that was some accurate shit right there. It was a good prediction. And then speaking of the challenge, oh, well, this may or may not be a challenge. I saw you guys play Download back in 2013, maybe? 2014 or something? Sounds right. Um, and you guys are coming back to Headline next year, which, I don't know, a lot of bands kind of shit themselves at Download because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's Donington, it's the home of rock, and they want blood. I was <laughs> just wondering, how you, do you guys feel differently about this slot? Or are you going to do anything different to kind of rise to the challenge, or is it just going to be... Same, or is it just going to be the same old, same old? Oh, I'm not just going to wiggle a bit harder, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think, <laughs> I think you always have to give it your all, and, and changing it every night is <clears throat> what we're about. So it, it's always going to be something different, I, and I don't think there's any reason to trip out, you know? No, that's the best part. I think I think why shows have been so good. Is there's a relaxation to the approach that we'll you know decide five minutes before we're going on to play something that we haven't played in twenty years. And it and if you and see someone with it up, if you see up. someone with a sign, uh, the sign says this goddamn tune or that goddamn tune, then you just do that. It feels nice to just be able to react and uh, in the moment. Yeah, you know, we come bringing these bearing the gifts you know and uh and so it's a, a, like you know you want to give all everything away and so i don't i don't think there's any worry necessarily it's nice to be able to play donnington but it's just as nice to play bournemouth last night too yeah. and, and i don't mean to cheapen either the, it's both it's both as good as it can get i mean you know um there aren't problems these yeah. aren't these aren't real problems no. you know i i think one of the Another thing that's been really wonderful and talking about like the changes and constants is after being away for so long, we didn't know what we were coming back to. And to see that we haven't lost anyone, it feels like, you know, our people are still with us. So that, that's been a really, a really inspiring thing and, and makes us, you know, really enjoy playing. Were you thinking much about reception and public perception of what you're coming back to? Was it just like, let's fucking go? Well, honestly, the the five years was so intense. Yeah. I forgot to remember that it was going to be perceived in some way. Yeah. I, I really, I think the making of, the, completing the record was just, just difficult enough where it was more a sigh of relief when it was done than anything else. Mm -hmm. Uh uh, it wasn't until it had been out for a few months that it was like, oh, people are going to, they're going to receive it. And I have no idea what that means. You know? Yeah. I tend to stay away from the enemies and the whoever else is of the world <laughs> because it's not really my job to focus on how it's received. You know, yeah. what's next? Is it going to be another six years for another Queens record or are you itching to get back in? Well, I think we should be making some, well, the only one thing that, the mantra of the last five years is uh, it won't be long now. <laughs> and, and I think that needs to pertain to making things too. Mm. So I, I, I certainly think we should make more, faster, better. Or, weirder. Yeah, weirder. And you, I think uh, I was told that you said uh, that that nice little acoustic code at the end of straight jacket thing is kind of like a nod and a wink, some breadcrumbs, a little Easter egg about something that might come. Is, is that, you're going to kind of head in that direction? Well, I think that, that, you know, um, it's wonderful to be able to look backwards and see that all these kind of connect like puzzle pieces. Mm. I mean, the last three records, certainly they're all sort of just connected. I mean, you're, a, you're trying to build a bridge so you can fucking get over it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, 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 uh, so it's important that these things connect 
it's important that they point to a direction and and from your past and towards the future i i i love that chance to you know we make music to hear the 50th time mm. you know um there's lots of just little trinkets and baubles and things to hear and 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 see so i um I just like doing that. Mm. I like it when it's like a puzzle. And uh, because you were both part of the project, I have to ask, post-pop depression part two, could it happen? Or was that, was that, did that have its own place in time? Well, <laughs> I mean, I would do that in a second. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. If, there, if there was ever the opportunity to do it, it would be amazing. Yeah. Um, but no plans? No plans. I mean, can you really, you can't force something into being yeah. You just have to be ready to accept it when it arrives. Yeah. No matter what that is. Mm -hmm. I just want to do that Royal Apple Hall show again. That was Oh, that was the <laughs> that was the coolest thing I've ever been allowed to be part of. But how but to try to chase that down again mm. is a big mistake. Yeah. Yeah. You know, acceptance is the key. I accept that that happened and I accept that it can never happen again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Post tour, you guys are gonna go home. Is there gonna is there like a, a kind of Queens of the Stone Age office Christmas party? Yeah, we all sit on a copier. And then we have that fax to all our friends. Queens of Stone Age, Merry Christmas. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Appreciate Thank it. you so much. Thank you. Wait. Oh.